All right, well, uh, here we are. Uh, again, welcome, Janu. Thank you so much for you, uh, taking the opportunity to talk with me. Um, I get the privilege to have a little conversation with you here, and I know that um, everybody at St. Matthew's is really looking forward to get to know you more. So I thought we'd start off and just ask a few questions and maybe give you a little bit of a chance to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, who you are. And I know you'll get, you're looking forward to get to knowing us and we'd love to get to know more about you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone. My name is Chinu, Chinu Chan. Yeah, I'm your new pastor. I'm so thrilled to have this opportunity to serve God and God's people with you all. Uh, we don't know the, all the details yet, but I'm sure God will lead us as we pay attention to Holy Spirit's directions. So we will find some ways in the, the ways that we can uh, imitate Jesus Christ. Uh, so for now, uh, thank you very much, Josh, for this opportunity so that uh, I know you have prepared uh, several questions to ask me and then I'll answer to that. So there we go. Let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll give it a try. So my, my really, um, we'll, we'll see how these, how they go. Um, well, it's just a simple question to start. Well, it's not so simple, actually. It's actually quite complex because as you might know, there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> the world is crazy right now. Um, you know, some of it is good. It may looks like that some progress is being made in, in some areas relating to, to, to racism and social justice in our world. But there's a cost to that. And there's people that are trying to figure out what that looks like. And there's people who are really concerned about that. Um, there's a lot of concern anytime you're talking about institutional change. Mm -hmm. um, there's concerns about this crazy thing called COVID that we've been dealing with for a while already. <laughs> um, you know, our world seems kind of upside down. Um, and we've, as a church, have been kind of soldiering through it. But of course, we just, uh, you know, we're in the midst of a, a transition here with, uh, with, uh, with, with you coming in and with Steve and Beth leaving. And we're so excited that you're here. But it's been a challenging time and a tumultuous time for not just us, but for you and for your church and for the, the world. <laughs> I'm conflating a lot of things here. But my question really is, what's something that God has taught you or shown you in the midst of your, uh, how you're experiencing this time right now? Mm. I believe uh, God is calling God's people to make uh, changes with our experience compassion. Did you hear me? Our experience compassion for the isolated and the oppressed and discriminated. Mm -hmm. You know, that words of social distancing and isolation have been two words that I have heard uh, most frequently since the pandemic broke out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use those words as if they were totally new to us then are they really new to us? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Uh, we human beings have a practice of one way social distancing for a long time in mm -hmm. our history. Wow. And yeah. distance the people because they were different. Distance mm -hmm. the people with the belief that my differences were better than others ones. You know, moreover, in the cases, the social system and power supported my practice of distancing. I didn't have to feel isolated and I couldn't feel it. But now I must feel the pain of being isolated and suffer from it. You know, none of us is free from the pain of being isolated because the pandemic situation has forced all of us, all of us to be distanced and isolated. Now it is a two way distancing. So I feel it, you feel it, we have to feel it. That being said, today couldn't be the better time to acknowledge the pain of being distanced and isolated than ever before in our human history. You know, we have realized all humans are this intimately connected to one another, regardless of any differences. My breathing can impact you and your life and vice versa, right? So we finally got to the point that we are one body literally one body, regardless of all the differences among us. So however, sadly, it seems not all of us have learned this lesson yet. So we still see the devil, evil action of discrimination is being done in our country and in our world. So therefore, as an accountable member of this American society, 
as a conscious Christian and as a responsible pastor who loves our country and our nation so much, I sense God's call for us to make changes. I strongly believe God wants us to use our own pain of being isolated to feel others' pain of being isolated, especially the pain of the oppressed and the discriminated due to the due to their different skin colors, mm -hmm. ethnicities, gender, age, sexual orientation, socioeconomic, or family background, and mental or physical ability, you name it. So moreover, with this experienced compassion, with this experienced compassion, God wants us to do something to make changes. So this is what God has shown me in the midst of this very, very challenging time. Amen. <laughs> I hope that I answered, another, your, I answered it, your question. Everybody right? just got a second sermon and <laughs> probably a lot better than the first one. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I know. I just want to stay on that and talk more about that. But I'll, we're going to give you, you, you have a whole summer to, to expound upon that wonderful, uh, wonderful idea because I think there's a lot there that we need to unpack. Um, it's great. I think you're ex exactly right. Um, and, uh, but I, you know, we are, um, you personally are also going through a transition um, as well as we are. What's been the hardest part about leaving Belfast? Well, um, before I answer the question, you know, uh, let me tell you this. If somebody comes to me and asks me, hey, you know, what is a Christianity? You know, tell me, you know, one sentence. Then probably I would say Christian, Christianity is all about relationships. Yeah. In a relationship with God, relationship with others, and relationship with myself, which is based on Jesus Christ's greatest commandment. You know, love God, love neighbor as yourself. So it's a relationship, you know. The congregation in Belfast, you know, uh, and I, we have been very attached, you know, emotionally and spiritually. So that's the hardest part. But also, especially uh, through my relationship with those who, God has helped me to develop a relationship with outside the church, like my siblings in Narcotics Anonymous. You know, uh, at one point, God, I sensed that God called me not just not do programs, anything like that, but basically live with them and build a relationship with them, you know, be with them, you know. So it used to be they and I, but now I can tell it's we. You know, so it was very hard to say goodbye, you know, uh, yeah, leave them, you know. Uh, so, yeah, basically relationship. My answer would be relationship was the part that I uh, had the most hard time with. Sure, I, that makes total sense. And uh, now for the question that you can't possibly answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What are you most excited about? in coming to St. Matthew's. What have you, if there's anything that you've learned so far or anything that you're looking forward to? I believe it's the same thing, relationship. That makes me most excited, you know, but more specifically, uh, you know, when I saw that logo, whatever you call it, the logo of the church, you know, received, transformed and sent. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you know, I got goosebumps, you know. <laughs> They just heard a bunch of it about it earlier, so. Oh, yeah. I got goosebumps, and my life-changing word, you know, mm. wounded the healer came into my mm. heart and mind. Yeah. You know, I myself was severely, you know, severely wounded years ago. At the time, Jesus Christ embraced me as I was, mm. and God healed me, you know, made me a whole again. And Jesus made me a wounded healer. So by using our church's terms, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, received me, transformed me, and sent me to witness this beautiful and powerful good news to another one who need to experience it. So, and I have uh, you guys, you know, I have you all who has the same vision as St. Matthew's UMC. So this is what makes me most excited about incoming to St. Matthews. Wonderful. That's good. We'll keep transforming because it keeps, it's a cycle. It keeps happening again and again. And Absolutely. So we're entering a new phase here and we're excited to be transforming and 
being sent into the world to be the hands and feet of Christ uh, with you. And uh, there we go. We're excited about it. So thank yep. you so much for uh, for having this little chat here with me. And uh, I hope this helps the community get to know you a little bit. But you've given us a lot here, I think, to look forward to over the course of the summer and the coming months. Um, we want to hear that story about the healing and um, your uh, what, what you've been through. I think that would be a really powerful story. And um, we look forward to hearing your, your, uh, your, well, at some point we're going to hear your whole life story. I'm imagining. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you. Blessings. Appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Josh. And thank you all. God bless you. <laughs>